Hey everybody, Card Dreamer here, coming at you on behalf of D-Class, Derailed, and all things D-Class related. And today's discussion is going to be one that's really kind of been bugging me lately. And it is going to be about the collectible market as it stands today. Um, so for those who know me, or has seen the unboxings on this channel, which is, aside from the discussions, the only thing on this channel so far. Um, but if you guys have seen this or Derailed, you guys know I enjoy collecting different things. I collect two biggest ones would be for Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters. I, I do collector's editions for video games. And... While the video game side of it has really never been an issue, I, lately, more and more, the the hobby side of it, the, the action figure, statuette, things like that, those have become the issue. And that's what I want to focus on today. So the, recent, the most recent thing that has spurned spurred this uh discussion would be uh for those who are in the know of NECA is one of the bigger names out there for collectibles and well collectible action figures they have a ninja turtle they have ninja turtle line and they cover a wide they cover a decent array of different aspects of the ninja turtles they've done um, ones based on the 1990s movie. They've done ones based on the cartoons, I believe. Um, they've done ones based on the video games. Uh, they're getting ready to uh, do take pre-orders for ones based on the second Ninja Turtle movie. And yeah, they 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 just cover a wide variety and. The latest ones were a four-pack Target exclusive based on the Ninja Turtles musical tour. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are – seems to be more and more lately people don't remember the Ninja Turtles for a while. Were a music group. They had a full-fledged album. Um, it was sponsored by Pizza Hut, and that was the only place you can get the album. It was on a cassette tape, but you got they had a tour book and that you can get from them, and they actually went on tour. The costumes were not the best. Um, the faces, especially, were a little creepy, and the tour was actually called "Coming Out of Their Shells" tour, and their costumes actually reflected that. They did not have a shell; they actually wore jean vests instead. But as a kid growing up, man, I loved that album. There were some good, like, even now, it's it's a guilty pleasure in the highest degree. Like, the highest degree guilty pleasure music to listen to. Especially just more or less for the nostalgia reasons. But it wasn't just the turtle. Splinter had a song. April had a song. If you watch the tour VHS that was out, there was a VHS uh, of the tour. There's even a making of this whole thing. VHS. Which was kind of cool. Um, but even Shredder gets a song. And this. Like it was hard to narrow down. Where. What turtle verse. This was from. It's almost. It's, own, it's really kind of it's own thing. Because it blended aspects from the movie and the cartoon. They were trying to appeal to a couple of different fan bases and get them all involved. But, yeah, so, I mean, they had... So, for those who know, uh, remember the Turtles 4 game, or Turtles in Time, as the arcade was called, the end credits used a song called Pizza Power. That actually came from the tour. So yeah, uh, NECA decided to do 
figures based on the turtles concert appearance it was called they called maybe there was copyright issues so they couldn't call it coming out of their shells so they called it uh, musical mutagen tour but the figures looked exactly like the cos i mean exactly neca does some really good figures there is no doubt about it they got looks down but these were target exclusives and that's been, that that's just been a nightmare so they were supposed to go on sale the 23rd which was the thursday and they're supposed to be in stores and on the website most stores never got them most stores still haven't got them online was a nightmare it didn't even launch until like 527 that day and of course I couldn't do anything online wise because I was working of course when it hit, the email hit I did go to two different targets the morning before work and uh, had somebody call a couple others nobody got them uh, it was just nightmare but they were already showing up on eBay already showing up on eBay so if you bought online the only way you could buy was the four pack of the turtles plus the accessory pack it was a combo th deal it was 150 bucks if you went into the store you could buy them individually the figures alone i believe were like 129 125 bucks something like that and i i mean out of all the collectibles i've gotten for the turtles this is arguably one i wanted the most one of the ones i wanted most if not the most just because I wore the crap out of that tape. Actually, he had to get a second tape because I wore it out so fast that I had to get another one. And I wore it out, obviously, before it even left pizza and got a second one. And, yeah, man. First, first of all, there was a limited quantity of these things to begin with. And Target is an exclusive. There is nobody else. Bots, scalpers were are using bots to, to buy them up online big time. And very few people even got their orders. I've been getting email notifications, and I'm on the website when they hit already. All I have to do is hit refresh and add to cart, and it still won't add to the cart because they're already gone that quick. Like, literally in a second, they're gone. Or there's problems with the website. I'm not, it could be either one, but I'm more, more suspecting it's bots because they're showing up more and more and more on eBay. And people don't want just two hundred dollars whatever people are asking me three four five hundred dollars for this thing and it is ridiculous ridiculous that these things are getting bought up by people who have no interest in them just to turn a profit and it, it's bugging me it's bugging me and i understand that's you know that's how scalpers work that that's how resale works that's how Certain markets where you know people who deal in collectibles that's how they make a living they, they get something and they turn around and sell it for a higher profit based on what it's worth but this is artificially inflating that type of market and i i, I hate it with a passion uh there was a few items before this that did it and it drove me nuts um the ninja turtle two pack based on the movie of casey jones and Raphael in his trench coat Never was able to get, never hit stores, was already uh, sold out on Target, never had a chance to get it. As a $50 item, it's already going for over 100 on on eBay, and it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't, I don't get how we got to this point. I don't. Growing up as a kid, Action figures were not collectibles. Not the way they are now. I mean, don't get me wrong. Action figures were collectibles, but not produced as collectibles, if that makes sense. It wasn't a day one, it's a collectible. They had to they, they had to be of a certain vintage. You know, you you, you didn't buy a G.I. Joe off the shelf. Back then, right off the uh, and be able to turn it around for fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. You, you you grew up and you kept it in good conditions, and then you were able to to do something with it. And figures didn't cost that much either. They were like, depending on the type of figure you're getting, you know, five, six, seven, maybe eight bucks. 
And nowadays, collect it, it, they're not action figures; they're collectibles. And you're looking at twenty five. You're looking at anywhere between twenty to thirty, maybe forty five dollars for these things. New. That is ridiculous. That is. It just blows my mind. And don't get me wrong. I do understand and appreciate there is a greater level of detail and articulation. But it's sad that now that – I don't know. I find it sad that companies took advantage of those who grew up with action figures, and now they're, they're gearing that marketing to them. And it's like, hey, when you grew up and you wanted this, you wanted to be able to do this and this and this with your figures. Now you can. Look. But you know, as a collector, you're not even doing that. Like you're, so Half the people don't even open them. I haven't even opened a lot of mine. I, I not that that's also a matter of where I'm going to put them if I did, but I, I don't. I still don't know. Even if I had a place, I don't know. I like them, and I, I like the idea of keeping them sealed and um, open them as well. So it's it's like I'm torn on a, on a, just a display aspect. But man, I mean, I grew up and I and I got the Ghostbuster figures. I had a crap ton of them. Uh, Ninja Turtles. I had almost the entire line. Uh, those were the two biggest ones, and you know I was just happy to have them. I, I kept them. I had their parts, and I, that's all it was. They were collectibles because I grew up with them, and now I'm an adult. And yeah, that's how they became collectible. That's how comic book works. Or comics, uh, comic books work. You know, they're they you don't they don't sell for hundreds of dollars now unless it's a big omnibus, you know, hardback collectors. You know, collected edition type of thing, but I mean, individual issues don't sell for hundreds of dollars until they reach a certain point, or you know, they were out of print or whatever. Even the death of Superman, while that be, you know, they had bagged issues and so forth, they didn't sell for hundreds of dollars, and they weren't. None of these things growing up were limited to retailers. They were what they were, and they sold out. You know, comic book stores all over the world got the death of Superman. You didn't have to go to a particular branch of comic book stores to get it, and there was only a limited run. And no, you got it until it sold out, and then they did reprints and what have you. Everybody was able to get some aspect of it. And on today, I mean. You used to be able to buy action figures everywhere. You can go into anywhere from a Toys R Us to a Kitty City to a, a Bradley's to a Kmart to Clover. These were stores around when I was growing up. In case you don't recognize half these names, uh, you know. Um, yes, you could go to Walmart's later years, but toys were sold, and the same type of toys. Same main toys. KB Toys was another one. I mean, but they were sold everywhere. There was not like – there wasn't any of this, well, this store gets certain type of action figures here, and this store is going to get those type of action figures there. There there wasn't that. There wasn't that. And, and now it's like – People, the, the business world and consumers both have gotten so impatient to just wait – for as the for time to make things a collectible, so they artificially generate the market for it. Now it's limited run production and exclusivity. Now it's okay. Only to, Walmart's going to get these figures. That's used for example the real Ghostbusters relaunch figures from Kenner. Only Walmart's going to get those. And then they have that whole issue with the shipping. Um, Target will get the exclusive ne some of the exclusive NECA stuff. All stores are going to get sell some Funko, but e they'll, the, each store can get their own exclusives Funkos, Funko Pops. I'm like, why? Look at Amiibos. Amiibos were just – they're just underproduced, honestly. I don't think there's actually the, – the, but no, there's exclusivity to those too. And you're forcing a market. It's not even fun in my opinion. It's not even fun to try to hunt these down. They're, it's just aggravation. It's, it's undue stress and pressure if you actually want to collect something out of love for it. it it's – 
you make it such a miserable experience that really, quite frankly, I don't think the companies deserve the money, not the people who make it and not the stores that sell it. You know, I, I can't blame – I can and I can't. I understand everybody's in – you know, a business is just – is there to do just that, make money. I get it. But there's a right and a wrong way to make money and what you're going to do to society. As a powerful business, as a business big enough – Say like a, a Walmart, Target, you're in a position to influence the world, or at least the areas that you're at, and you're choosing to influence by creating this stress-related environment. You have an online thing that is susceptible to bots left and right. You're doing, you're not even getting your shipments in, if at all. You're, you, and then you got the companies themselves who are making these things like NECA, but they're not the only ones. I, I'm just using them as an example. Please note, NECA is not the only one that does this, like I mentioned Funko and anything else. Um, but then you make limited runs of them. So not only are you making it exclusive to one particular store, so now if your area doesn't even have that store, you're screwed. And then good luck with online because of bots. So then you're double screwed. But you're making limited run, limited access. What, how? how? If, if a business's purpose is to make money, why are you not doing what the people want? That's what really boggles my mind. You're saying, I want, look, we're making a product that people have been clamoring for. But we're not going to make it widely available. All we're going to do is do this little bit and screw you if you don't get it. That's really the mentality. I actually just watched an interview with the guy from that guy. I forget his name. Randy, I believe his name was. and his Most of his point of views, I just didn't fathom. Some of them he had decent points. He wasn't completely uh, out of the ballpark. But he was definitely looking for the exit. I mean, I, he, I just, why? He, I know one of the reasons he gave is, oh, you limit available, you know, you limit how much you can get out there. So what? You're not, it's, it doesn't make sense to go to, to say that. So what if you don't get 20 action figures out there in a year? Do 18 and do a little – do a bigger runs of your previous – do 16. I don't care. Do 15. Just, it, it doesn't matter. It, reduce the number you're putting out. Make more. You'll have more happy people who are going to come back and wait for those other ones. You seriously will. Do you want to sell a few thousand or do you want to sell a few hundred thousand? Your company is going to make money, and that's what you're in the business for, right? And if your business makes that much more money – then you can afford to be bigger and then make more figures at a time. Can you not? Isn't that the point? So you're, the attitude that, well, we're just going to make it collectible and oh well, doesn't make sense to me. You're the, To force that type of market. I don't – who are you – who are you really pleasing except scalpers and the people who take advantage of the situations? I can't stand scalpers. I hate them. It's ridiculous. I refuse to I, – I just refuse to really support that. I'm not saying I never bought anything on eBay. Let's, let me set this record straight. I'm, I do not want to support a scalper day one. Now, some things I was late to a party on, even knowing they existed. Let's say the 1990 movie figures. I actually really didn't know about them until – I thought they were Comic-Con exclusive, and I always thought that meant like – you had to go to Comic Con, or you didn't get anything. I, I I knew there was some there. I didn't know, like when GameStop started selling the Movie Turtles, I thought that was the first time. I didn't know there already were certain sets out there. So when I found somebody who was selling the the big box set with Master Splinter, Shredder, and two foot soldiers, yeah, it was a, it was pr pricey and beefed up from what it originally sold for. But that was on me because I missed it, and it had been a good while. Same thing when I bought the Ghostbusters slime figures from the uh, based on the movies, or the spectral figures from the real Ghost, uh, or not the no those I got on time, but the slime 
this is the slime covered Ghostbusters from that was a Comic Con exclusive or PAX, I believe I should say. That that makes sense that I would pay those in flight because I miss those before I even knew about them, before I really thought about or had access or even money to get those things. That's on me. I'm not going to be mad at anybody in the situation. But for scalpers to go around and buying them all up day one and turning around and reselling them day one on eBay, that's horrible. That's horrible. That's giving nobody a fair chance. A fair chance. Period. And companies should be ashamed for forcing that. And maybe it's partly because Toys R Us won, uh, won under, basically, and where else are you going to send them at? I get it. I, I kind of get that. Where else are we Where else are we supposed to sell if we can't do it to Target and Walmart? They're the two biggest retailers out there right now. You're right. You're right. I, I won't argue that. But they don't have to be exclusive. You can ma- you can still produce a very much larger quantity, sell to both stores, and you can do your own online store, which I, they do have to a degree. And I know they're they're changing how they, the business practice are going to do a test run with the Toka and Razar figures, which I am very very happy about. And I hope it works. I hope that's they're going to be their continued plan from now on. But. That should have been implemented day one. If you're going to do limited access or at least limited runs, then you, no matter what, should have them available on your own website. I'm sorry. If you're the company and you don't even – you can't even offer your own product, I, I'm just irritated. I mean compare this to, say, other type of collectibles. Let's say – let's look back when baseball cards were huge, right, or trading cards. I know trading cards still exist. Uh, for certain things, but they're not as big as they used to be. They're they're not. There's no argument, especially baseball cards. Um, even I had collected baseball cards for a while, and I really wasn't into sports. Can you imagine if you're trying to collect certain things and and there only a certain chain of stores had? And now I'm going to show my age here. <laughs> who were the big players back then? But Bo Jackson cards or Mike Schmidt cards or Nolan Ryan or whatever. Can you imagine if they weren't in packs or anything like that? You can only go to one particular uh, chain of sports uh, sports stores and hope they had one in stock. Can you like what would that have done to the baseball card industry? At least with everybody with the, when it came to those type of collectibles. The collectibles came in trying to collect them. You go one out, and the randomization within the pack, right? Everybody had a fair and equal chance to do it. Everybody buys a pack. They each had a chance of opening the same they, – they, they each all had the, the same mathematical probability of getting the same cards. Sure, you bought more packs. Your odds went up, but it was even. It was fair. And you can go to any place that sold baseball cards. And it didn't have to be a sports store. It could have been a Kmart, what have you, Sears, what I mean, I'm just naming stores here. But any place that had even an impulse aisle usually had some trading training cards, tops or Fleer, upper deck, right at the checkout lane, and you could buy a pack. I mean, you weren't restricted where you could go. It was convenient. Everybody had it every business got a little fair share of their, their profit, you know? It's just, and that isn't to say there weren't limited run collectibles back in my day, but you know what they were? They weren't toys. They were, I remember when I went to a particular mall, it's no longer around, which is a shame, but it was a big mall, and there was a there was a collectible shop across from the comic book store where I used to go to as a kid. And they had a life size statue of Yoda. It was it was only a few thousand I think a couple thousand. I think maybe there was like five thousand, ten thousand or something made or whatever. That's a collectible. And it was expensive, but I wanted it. I never could get it. It was like nine hundred bucks. I think. I could be exaggerating that it's been so long. But um it, it was a few hundred at least. But that's a collectible. Because that's not gear for kids. That is an adult. 
That's a statue. Because what's a kid going to do with the statue, right? I mean, he might think it's neat, but they're going to want to play with it. That's a collectible. That makes sense to be a limited run. I, no brainer. Cool. You miss it, you snooze, you lose. Makes sense. But action figures, guys. We're talking action figures. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It is a toy. The quote Woody from Toy Story. You are a toy. You know? <laughs> I mean, where do we draw the line? And I sure, every, anything could be collectible if it holds value to people. I get that. I really do. But don't force the market to be collectible. Let people decide what's collectible. Your business, you're in business to make money, and you're losing out. You doing this, you're selling your toy for 150 bucks. People are selling it on eBay for 500. Pfft. Why? You might as well just cut to the chase and do it yourself. Look how much more profit they're making. It sounds to me you did something wrong. You could do far less runs and make the same amount of money as scalpers making per item. I don't, I don't understand. Like, no matter how you look at this, your business is flawed, in my opinion. I don't know, guys. I'm just very distraught with the collector's market, and I would love to collect certain things. I, I in general, it, a lot of the stuff I have, which I think is neat, but a lot of it I get when I see it on clearance, dirt cheap. I would never pay full price. I, I can't afford to pay the prices that are asked a lot of the times. I get what's available to me. I'm not going to necessarily go out of my way to really try to hunt down the obscure and this uber expensive. This was like the, the turtle, this turtles uh, musical mutagen tour thing was one of the few I'm really was trying to go like stay up till midnight to try to get it. And, or I, you know, I, I checked every couple hours I, when that thing was supposed to launch, I checked midnight uh, when Wednesday rolled into Thursday, I was checking three in the morning. I checked six in the morning I checked 9 in the morning. It was not available on that website. I get to work. 527, I get an email. They're available. 612, they are gone. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Why would you – why create this artificial inflation when people could just be happy buying your product? Isn't that well, – everybody could be happy. You could be making money, be like rolling the dough. Be, your, be Bill Gates or whatever you want to be. Everybody else could be happy having this collectible that they really enjoy. It's collectible because they want to collect it. It doesn't have to be collectible because it's rare or a limited run. They collect – collecting by definition means they're just trying to get them all. You know, They're trying to grow a, a an assortment, a variety of something that they like. People have a movie collection, but the movies aren't rare. People have a video game collection, but the video games aren't rare for the most part. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? Collections, collectibles don't have to be rare to be collectibles. Don't do not do this. I, I, I really wish people or companies like NECA, McFarland Toys, you're another one. You're not as bad, but you are another one. Diamond Select, you're pushing it a little too. I'll call you all out. I mean, I I just would like to see. Well, no, Diamond Select is not bad. They at least haven't done. No, I don't want to say that either. Uh, Di Diamond Select, for the most part, has been pretty. I've seen it at different places. Um, but yeah, so come on guys, I'm encouraging you businesses. Think about who, what, what is your goal? Did you find this company to be greedy like this? Or did you find the company or found this, your company to do something you love for people who love it with you to share this connection? NECA, when you started doing this turtle line, did you do it because you're like money, 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 hey. or did you like, Man, you know, I grew up on Ninja Turtles. I love the cartoon. I know people would love these figures, and, and it was just the nostalgia factor. Plus, kids growing up on Ninja Turtles today. Wouldn't this be awesome to just share this love in different areas of Turtles to bring everybody together? I hope that was your initial idea. So why? But if it was, why are you not executing it? 
build your business around your your what your your desire was not around the greed anyway guys i know i'm ranting but i'm passionate about the collector market because these are really nice products they really are and it's a shame that things have gotten the way they were when now you're spending so much on these things that you shouldn't have to but I would like to hear other people's collect, uh, you know, collector stories. What are some of your frustrations? What are some of the things? Can you name things that are do people companies are doing it right? I would love to hear the opposite. I really would. Give me that shining light. Give me that hope. Name some people companies that are doing it right. But either way, I would just love to hear from you guys. Anyway, I'm Card Dreamer. This has been D Class Derailed. And until next time, everybody, thank you all for listening. Stay evil.